Chapter 2, Loneliness, and community, and family, and lovers, and oneself, and you, and your ego. Fuck that feeling, though. So, as you may have guessed, we will tackle this aspect of loneliness by discussing everything but loneliness. Why? Well, loneliness is not really a thing. It's like cold. Cold is not really something. It's just the absence of heat. Same shit for loneliness. It is the absence of something. You must be able to adapt your mind to this type of thought. So, think about the last time you were lonely. You may have tried to rescue your loneliness by watching porn, or playing video games, or going on social media such as Instagram, or Facebook, or Snapchat. You see, you are filling in the loneliness with something real. Well, somewhat real. If you have been following me on YouTube, and if you've been playing close attention to my content, you know that I have a very polarizing thought about addiction and choice architecture. You see, choice architecture refers to the paradigm which allows us to design our physical, mental, social, emotional, and spiritual environment so it's conducive to our success, including overcoming loneliness and adapting wholesome community and tribe building. I will not really get into too much choice architecture jargon here since you can go on my YouTube channel for that. However, I still want you to encapsulate that feeling of loneliness that you felt recently. Do it now. Close your eyes and for the next 5 to 10 seconds as I go into silence, I want you to feel the pain of loneliness. Feel that feeling that I'm sure you felt before. That no one loves you. That you will die alone, that you don't have an intimate life partner, that you are not close to your family, that your friends or girls you've met flake on you, that you spend nights alone in your bedroom masturbating, binging on Netflix or YouTube, or craving and gulping down sugar. Perhaps none of this is applicable to you. Don't worry about it in that case. But if you've ever been lonely and felt pain in your life from it, this is the time to feel that feeling. I'll be back after 10 seconds. Close your eyes and feel it now. Now, I don't know about you, but when I feel loneliness, it's soul crushing. And that is why we must get to the bottom of it. Let's touch on some perspectives and then dig into the scientific literature. If you're not a scientist or have some prior academic experience, you'll be surprised to know that we actually conduct studies on loneliness. We, by we I mean us scientists and those in the academic universe, try to figure out the structures in the brain associated with social principles, including empathy, self-efficacy, this is important since it is widely known that loneliness leads to mental dysfunction. Although we will get into sexual dysfunction later on in this book, I want to cover some aspects of mental and social dysfunction now. Let's first define loneliness according to the literature and clear up some terminology. What is loneliness? Well, according to the main textbook on the subject written by Peplo and Perriman, it is an, I quote, unpleasant state experienced when a discrepancy exists between the interpersonal relationships one wishes to have and those that one perceives oneself as currently having. In a nutshell, you want to be around people, but you ain't around them. Or you want to have certain social feeling, social environmental exposure, but you ain't having it. It is a, it is essentially one of the ultimate signs of scarcity. Reference 5. The scientific community also recognizes, as do the rest of us, that loneliness is rampant amongst young people. You being one of them. 
turns out both self-efficacy, the ability to do what one's want to do in life under obstacles and barriers which one faces, and empathy, the ability to understand someone's emotions, are both negatively correlated with loneliness. With certain caveats which we will get into later. A number of experiments have shown this, but why should you care about loneliness besides the obvious painful experience? Well, loneliness has terrible physiological consequences. It is highly correlated with immunological dysfunction, reduced sleep quality, and neuroendocrine changes such as hypothalamic pituitary adrenocortical activation. Yes, if you've been following the channel and read my other ebooks and video courses, you know a bit about another axis related to this. Here, I just spoke about the hypothalamic pituitary adrenocortical axis. The axis you probably know about is the hypothalamic pituitary testes axis, HPT. The HPT axis is how we produce testosterone in our bodies. I will not get into the details here, but just watch my YouTube video on the synthesis of testosterone titled, The Science of Testosterone Synthesis and Transport, to get details on this process. The axis we will discuss here is the HPA axis, which is heavily involved in cortisol and stress responses, both features of the adrenal gland or cortex. Loneliness, to scare you further, is associated with clinical disorders as well, including cardiovascular abnormalities, obesity, and headaches. The list goes on. This knowledge is particularly important for us because these traits associate with self-esteem and therefore loneliness has been shown to be directly linked to low self-esteem. Now, I don't have to explain to you in detail how all of this relates to masculinity. Imagine a man who is self-confident, doesn't have any dysfunctions or addictions, and is very masculine and portrays ma masculine energy. Do you think he's likely to be lonely? Do you think he's likely to have low self-esteem? I think not. Now, do not get loneliness confused with solitude here. Solitude is when you are by yourself, you're reading a book, or you're watching a video, but you don't feel lonely, you don't feel any pain or any scarcity. You choose to be by yourself. You choose to be at peace in meditation and spirituality. That is solitude, very eloquently described by Thoreau and other great authors. And very well put together by Sherry Turkle, who is also an author and she writes about social media addiction. She writes about empathy. And she has several books regarding smartphone and technology addiction in young people. Her books include Alone Together and Reclaiming Conversation, both of which I highly, highly recommend you read. I am a big fan of hers and she is one of my mentors. Let's really dig into the neuroscience of all this now. When we observe the white matter density of areas associated with empathy and self-efficacy, we notice a significant difference between lonely individuals versus those who do not suffer from loneliness. Reference 6. Well, what is white matter? It is the part of the brain, and in particular, part of a brain cell which transmits information to other parts of the brain using a substance known as a myelin that allows the neuron to transmit information over long distances without weakening the transmission. And therefore, if there is a dysfunction in white matter, shown by the decrease in white matter density in an area, we will get less activity in that area. Thus, we see an actual neural correlate, or in other words, a physiological mechanism demonstrating that loneliness may lead to further lowering of empathy and self-efficacy. These are serious matters, and I want you to pay close attention to your own life. And if there is loneliness in it, you may not realize it until it's too late. 
Now let's quickly discuss a caveat to all this. You see, lower empathy can increase loneliness. Since you will not understand the emotion of others and may thus be left out of social situations and gatherings. On the other hand, increased loneliness may actually increase empathy. Now this type of loneliness is what I refer to as solitude. When you are alone and you want to be alone because you want to focus, you want to concentrate, you want to do deep work. I always talk about deep work, which is the ability for you to spend hours and hours on a subject without disturbance, without any kind of other activity. That is deep work. There's actually a book <laughs> titled Deep Work by Cal Newport, who is a professor of computer science. And he puts it very, very well in that book. And he actually tells us to get off of social media completely. You should also watch his TED Talk. Now, I know this is a lot to take in. And I apologize if I included too much neuroscience in this one. Trust me, man. I tried to keep it to a minimum. There is so much cool neuroscience info that I want to portray here. I could go on forever. However... For the sake of respecting your time and giving it to you straight, let's end this section soon. If you want more science on this, send me an email and I'll personally respond. You may also submit your questions to our Facebook group, which leads me to the next very important point. When I first encountered this problem amongst my clients, I realized that we lack community. We lack the tribe presence and identity. I therefore created our Facebook group biggest balls in the game and completely transform my YouTube channel and community so that we can have standards of accountability, challenge, and positivity. Accountability. When a tribe leader or one of the members of your tribe holds you accountable, loneliness is gone. Why? Because you are responsible for the health of your brothers and sisters. You see, we live and die as a tribe. We depend on each other. It is not individual self-esteem. It is group self-esteem. It is not individual self-efficacy. It is tribe self-efficacy. We must work in a collaborative and congenial environment away from competition and negative energy. Competition versus challenge. What is the difference? You see, when we do seven day challenges in our Facebook group, it is so we can all do the challenge together through collaboration and accountability. It is not a competition. Nevertheless, there is positive and enabling competition, which is quite healthy and encouraged. As you may have noticed, if you have been on our Facebook group, you get happiness when you read the posts, when you see people giving you high fives and pats on the back your heart can probably feel that emotion and empathy. It took me coaching 200 clients one on one to realize that the dysfunction, addictions and loneliness was due to the lack of community. When I started the strength camp Facebook page upon my arrival, it was for this very reason. And Elliot Hulse and the team has always thank thanked me for bringing their community together. It is something I feel deep pain for. Bringing communities and people together is what men with the biggest balls do. It's what we do. Fuck yes, son. Now that we have addressed loneliness from a scientific perspective, let's get into chapter three. No fap. That's right. No fap one of the most prominent topics with regard to loneliness and belonging. 